This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hey, what's up? This is Int80. I'm the rapper in Dual Core, coming at you with another Hack 5 segment. Now, you might have seen me on episode 1010 talking about anti forensics at DerbyCon. And on episode 1012, there was a write in from a person named Sonic, I think it was, about recovering files off of an extended file system. Now, I've done this before. It's really easy to do, and I use an open source tool called Scalpel to carve out uh, deleted files. So, uh, without further ado, I thought I'd bring you guys a Hack 5 segment on carving files with Scalpel. Now before we get into it, I have a few action items to drop, if you will. Uh, first off, I'm not a forensics professional. I'm not your forensics professional, and this does not constitute professional forensics advice. I'm uh, just a dude that likes to play with bytes, so take it for what you will. Let's get right into it with Scalpel. Um, Scalpel is driven by a configuration file. The configuration file specifies formats that you're interested in and the header and optionally footer bytes that define uh, that particular format. So if, for example, we were interested in carving out JPEG files out of a uh, file system, um, we can go ahead and grep JPEG out of the scalpel config file. And we can see like the header and footer bytes that are defined uh, for the particular format. Now, if you are running a Debian-based distro like Ubuntu or Backtrack, you can just install Scalpel through apt if it's not already installed. And the default uh, path on the file system is going to be Etsy Scalpel for your Scalpel config. So taking a look at um, the Scalpel config file format, uh, first off, you've got your extension. So in this case, JPEG. Uh, y is like whether we're going to look for this file extension or not. Um, or this format or not, so Y or N. Um, and then the next set, you, in the next uh, column, you've got a set of numbers. And the numbers uh, specify, uh, in our case, um, we're interested in carving the max file size. Scalpel has like a more specific configuration you can do, like setting um, bounds, but we're just interested in like a max file size. Next up, you've got the header bytes. So with the uh, JPEG header, that's just defined in the standard for JPEG for the file format. Um, if you have like a specific format you're interested in, have fun reading the file format specifications. It's not very fun. Um, and then there's, in the case of JPEG, there's a file footer. A lot of formats that you'll come across don't have a footer, but uh, they might have like the size data for the actual file embedded in the data structure. So you can actually carve out more data than you really need and still be fine. Um, okay, so let's say that we're going to carve out some JPEGs off of uh, an extended file system. So we've got our uh, JPEG definitions and we will just um, put those into a JPEG config that we'll use. Um, make sure that you uncomment uh, any formats that you want. Um, that'll come in handy later. When we're talking about carving files or undeleting a file, uh, there are a couple important aspects at play. And so it's kind of important to take like a real brief detour so that we kind of get into like the a little bit of the nitty gritty as to what's actually going on. So when you have your like your hard drive or USB drive and you take a file that's on there and you delete it like you drop it in the recycling bin or you do an RM in Linux what's actually happening is you're unlinking the file from the file system. So the contents of the file all the bytes and everything they remain on the device but the file system is being told and there's nothing there, you can write over that space, no problem. So in the future, when the file system needs to write to that exact space on the device, it thinks it's free, it overwrites the previous contents, whatever. But if the previous contents haven't been overwritten, even though they've been RM'd or deleted out of the recycling bin, you can still catch them and still carve them back out. So this is the file recovery off the extended file system. Um, now each format has its own specified header and sometimes footer, as previously mentioned. Uh, let's take a look at some JPEG files that we're going to work with here. Uh, we've got a few JPEGs that we're going to work with. Let's just take a look at them first and you know make sure they render and everything like that and then we'll get to working with them. And we'll take a look at the bytes um, so that we can see, you know, we've already pointed out the header bytes for JPEG and the footer bytes, but let's actually see them in use in the file. So I've got this pix directory and uh, let's take a look at the pineapple. Okay, so 
Here's our Pineapple, our Mark III. Sweet, it's a JPEG, it displays, no problem. But let's look at the bytes that are underneath it. And remember, this is our header byte signature and our footer byte signature. So at the very back, at the very end of the file, we should see FFD9, and at the very front of the file, we should see FFD8, FFE0, null, and 10, all in hex. All right, so we take our hex dump, and all right, there's our header signature, FFD8, FFE0, null, and 10. Cool, got it. And at the very back of the file, FFD9. All right, sweet. So if we were to encounter a JPEG file, specifically this Pineapple Mark III JPEG file on a file system, Scalpel could carve it out using the JPEG configuration. Just real quick, let's take a look at some, like, uh, some JPEGs that we're gonna work with, just so we make sure they're actually valid JPEGs and they actually work. What do we got? Let's do one day, all right. That's a picture of me with my good friends MC Frontalot and Whitey Cracker rapping in MC Frontalot's video Zero Day off of his album Zero Day. Check that out on YouTube if you haven't already, it's fun. We've got Ducky. So we've got our sweet Teensy Hack 5 Ducky for doing all the leap fun hacks. And we've got, let's do Yup. We've got Paranoid Parrot posting the Nope, Chuck Testa meme on Reddit and being paranoid, everybody on Reddit hates him. <laughs> okay, so we've got some JPEGs that we know are valid, they render fine, and uh, let's work with those. So we've seen that we've got some JPEGs that we can work with, we're gonna carve them out, um, but instead of an actual device, like a, like a four gig USB drive or a you know, multi-terabyte external hard drive, um, we're gonna leverage the fact that Linux treats like everything as files and we can use files as a device. So we can make like a much smaller device to work with and it'll be a lot faster and it's a lot more flexible for doing experimentation. It's pretty sweet. All right, so let's go ahead and make a file um, that is all zeros and it'll be 100 megabytes in size and we'll call it hack5.image, cool. So we've got this 100 meg hack5.image and uh, using the loopback interface or the loopback um, functionality inside of Linux, we can map our uh, hack5.image to a device, loop zero. Um, if you're already using loop zero, just specify like the next sequential one, like loop one, loop two, whatever. Um, but now that we've got this hack5 image mapped to uh, loop zero, we can treat it just like a device. So in the case of the write-in from Sonic, it was asking about recovering um, files off of an extended file system from Linux Mint like a year ago. Um, I feel like I've been using Extended 4 for the past year, so uh, we'll just use Extended 4. I, I mean, it may have been out like a little bit less time than that, but Extended 2, 3, and 4, Scalpel should handle just fine. So uh, we'll format um, our Loop Zero device uh, with extended four, if we uh, delete the device and we run file against the hack5 image, we can see that it's actually an extended four file system. Um, it's like a partition basically on a device. So we're good to start working uh, with the device and if we want to mount it and actually treat it as like a mounted device, we just specify the loop option and I've made a uh, hack5 directory under my mount directory for a mount point. So we mount it and we're good to go. Start working with it. Cool. So now let's, we took, we had those JPEGs, right, that we took a look at. Let's go ahead and copy them onto the Hack5 uh, mounted file system. So let's see, actually, let's go into the PIX directory and we'll copy one day. Um, we will copy Ducky and we'll copy, yup, Chuck Testa into our Hack5 directory. We run sync so that we synchronize all the writes um, and get the file systems in sync. And if we do a stat against um, the uh, JPEGs on the uh, mounted hack5 image or device, um, we'll see that they're actually there and they're all in stats and everything's good. And of course you can see them in the file system. All right, so we've unmounted our hack5 uh, image and so hopefully everything is synced across. 
We've got our three JPEGs on there, whatever. So now let's uh, remount the file system again. So now let's go ahead and remove our JPEGs off of our Hack5 device. And then we sync and stat. No more JPEGs on the Hack5 image. Cool, all right. So now it is time for recovery. So we've got our jpeg.conf that we grepped the JPEG signatures out of scalpel.conf earlier. And again, we're just looking for just JPEGs here. So if we do scalpel-c for our config file and pass it our jpeg.conf, and lastly our hack5.image, fingers crossed, hopefully we should carve out some JPEG files. So it runs. Um, scalpel by default does two passes, so it does two sweeps across the file system image or the device image that you pass in. And it looks like on the first pass it got two files, and on the second pass it got three. All right, cool. So if you saw like episode 513 uh, where I was carving um, Windows executable files out of packet captures, it's kind of the same concept really. Um, so let's take, let's take a look at what we got here. I'm going to go with the second pass uh, images since we got three in that one. So there's our one day image. All right, cool. So what up front, what up Whitey? Uh, let's take a look at what we got for our third carved image. Oh, there's our ducky. All right. So remember, we removed all of these. We did an RM, like you saw it. It's they were gone. And let's see what we got. Oh, and we got our Chuck Testa paranoid parrot. So sweet. Even though we removed all of the JPEGs off of the file system, off of the Hack Five image, we're still able to recover them, carve them back out. So Scalpel is doing its job. As I said before, um, Scalpel is driven by a config file. Uh, and so your config file is really kind of like your, it's your whole base. Um, it's, you know, like if you specify, like you're going into an investigation or you just wanna, you know, carve out a, as much stuff as you can grab, um, you really need like a big config file with a bunch of different formats, right? Think about your own file system at home. Think about your, your hard drive and how many different types of files you have on there. And if all of a sudden like something got corrupted, your OS didn't boot anymore, you need to recover as much stuff as you can. Well, you need like a bunch of different formats. So, um, and you need them to be accurate as well. So I've been like building this scalpel config file that's just got like a bunch of different sources that I found online. Um, from Googling and I've just kind of formatted to work with Scalpel. I've dumped it up to my GitHub. So it's github.com slash int0x80, int80, that's, that's me, it's my handle. Um, and you can go ahead and grab the Scalpel config from there. A lot of the stuff I've grabbed online, only a few of the signatures that are up in that Scalpel config are ones that I've personally entered and validated. So if there are inaccuracies, please like send them back to me, send your modifications, send your, send your additions, send your deletions, whatever you got. Like I said, for uh, Scalpel stuff, uh, you can get like the big config on uh, my GitHub. It's github.com slash int0x80. I'm int80 on the Hack5 forums, same handle. You can always holler at me there. If you're on Twitter, I'm at dualcoremusic, D-U-A-L. And uh, just Google dualcore, you'll find us. And if you have like any kind of questions, comments, concerns, uh, fan mail, hate mail, requests for autographs, uh, photos with uh, funny pictures in them or whatever, send them to feedback at hack5.org. Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. And if you're setting up a website to show off your pictures of your cat, brag about your new boating skills, or do something business related, Domain.com is the best place to buy a domain name for your new idea. Domain.com's easy checkout process makes it simple to find your domain name and set up your website without hassles. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you available names, making it easy to select the domain extension that's right for you. Find a suite.com or get a .co and save a character. Already have a domain somewhere else? It's cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year free. The guys at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5 and want to hook up other Hack5 fans. Use the coupon code HAK5 and get 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. It's 
only $6.47 for transfers. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think domain.com. That's right, it's time once again for the nibble, and this week, Rocco writes in to say, in case you need to monitor your CPU temperature, you can just write a little script. I love little scripts, and this one begins so simply with while sleep one, which just says, hey, let's just hang out for a minute, right? And then do A, C, P, I, tack T, and then we're done. Run this, and then every single second, it's gonna tell me that my CPU is not yet on fire. How awesome is that? Anyway, you have four bits, go ahead and send them over to hack5.org slash nibble.